Michael's got a challenge on. But I think you might be up for this. We'll see. Yeah, without giving too much away. I can't quite see what's happening now. Do we think, Ch I, I think I've got a problem. Choices. And if you wonder why he's coming in sideways. What, so he can hold on to me? To squash small ladies like you. <laughs> Hi, we're Jackie and Michael, and we're exploring the rivers and canals of Britain on our 57 foot narrowboat border Riva. We'll show you what it's like to live day to day on a narrowboat, and we'll arrive in some beautiful places next to the water. We go and explore the areas we've moored at for the night, and we'll take you with us. Morning, welcome back. We're just coming through the uh, first of the stone locks. I think we've got eight locks and about four miles to do today. Uh, the first one was a real problem, really tough gate. Um, fortunately, the boat that was going down stayed and helped me to close it. Couldn't do it on my own at all. The toughest lock ever. Anyway, it's dull, the weather is. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to brighten up later, so we'll see what happens. Come along. This is where I fall in, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, well, hold on. This is one deep, deep lock. I need to look on the map and see how deep it is, but it's, yeah, this is really deep. This is yard lock uh, going through stone. Morning. I think that was the welcoming party. See how deep it is, can't you? Really tall, really big gates. I won't even tell you what time it is. It's way, way past coffee time. I'm going to make a start on it. Let me take you down below. Kettle's on, coffee's ready. Michael's checking that the boat's okay at the front. We're, uh, we're nearly up. Literally, nearly at the top. Michael's doing the lock for me. Much needed coffee. Right, just get me another cup. Two cups for me this morning. Needed. How much water's coming in the front of there? Good grief, I need to stay backwards. So we've just had a quick pit stop for lunch, a quick sandwich, and a cup of tea, and uh, we're just going to do the next four locks. Fortunately, there's another boat coming down in the next lock, so that's going to be ready for us. And Michael's just coming into the lock now. So I'm not sat down being lazy, I have just done the lock. And if you wonder why he's coming in sideways, it's because of that by wash over there. Huge amount of water. That's suddenly speeded up. That's the runoff from the um, next pound and uh, the boat coming down in the next lock. So they've just emptied their lock and you can see how suddenly that picked up. It's just corrected it. You'll see him just brought the, uh, just brought the nose round. Well done, Captain. Yep, expertly done. Was that a bit rubber dingy rapid? <laughs> sideways coming into the lock. That was really good, that. You did well there.
Yet somehow I know your history Oh, come what may, I'm ready Picture frames, lavender pain They all live here Within this romance I get This, just before the Wedgwood factory, it's very peaceful. And then, not much else, apart from those guys. Peaceful, very peaceful. Just having a walk into Wedgwood the home of the famous pottery and uh, dinner service stuff so yeah it's so cold today it's absolutely freezing i've still kept my shorts on but it's say, yeah let's have a but it's cold got my legs out but um yeah it's cold but our path has been stopped by uh, an impending train so i'll have to wait for that oh and the other uh, reason for the trip to the pottery is it's coffee time and you know what jack's like <laughs> We're going to look at some pottery um, and some history. Yeah, sounds fantastically exciting. But pottery and history. But the question is coffee first. I think it could be coffee first if that's <laughs> all right. Do we think so, I, I think I've got a problem? So Smell me work, walk all the way to the Wedgwood factory <laughs> for a coffee. On the pretenses of looking round. Um, no, we are. No, we are going to. Oh. I, well, I'd like to. We're we doing that. For, well, I'd like to. We're we doing that first. No, I'd like a no. coffee first. <laughs> I think I've got so a problem. Up against. Please Just like this every day. Please comment down below if you think I've got a problem. <laughs> Arg. Well, I don't think you need to comment down below because <laughs> clearly it's a problem. Oops. Some may say an addiction. Oh, okay. Well, there could be worse. <laughs> There could be worse. Yeah, so I think a coffee's fine. So we're just arriving now. Right. Here we are. Yes, we are. It's very grand, isn't it? It's grand, yeah. yeah. We'll go and stand next to, is it Uriah Wedgwood? No. Uriah Wedgwood? No, <laughs> what's his first name? Uriah Heap. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> My uncle used to work at Uriah Heap's uh, factory. Uriah Heap was a musician. No, he wasn't. Uriah Heap was a... So you're walking um, backwards into world's people into Uriah Heap was a uh, had something to do with engineering or something I thought Uriah Heap was a musician no well what? not the Uriah Heap I, well, this, I, I don't I, think this is Uriah Heap this chap behind you here he's holding a pot is it Joseph Wedgwood oh, I can't stop guessing let's have a look tell me what his proper name is no Josiah Josiah nice to meet you Josiah he's a big chap isn't he Huge feet. Ah, uh, like it. That's why he's got his hands like that. Is it? Yeah. So he can hold on to me. To squash small ladies like you. <laughs> he's got big hands. I feel a bit wind dishevelled. <laughs> you know what they say about men with big hands, don't you? Stop it. Big gloves. Right, come on, coffee time. Coffee's there. I failed. Wrong location for coffee. Coffee's this way. Anyway, he's buying. I think it's in the main entrance, our kid. Michael's sitting in a very grand seat. Look at that. This is very grand. It is very nice, isn't it? Well, yeah. We can get our um, coffee served in wedge cups. Oh yeah. Oh, probably yeah. Gosh, look at this. It's, um, coffee, it's coffee time. You happy now? I am happy now, and it's in a beautiful Wedgwood cup. Yeah. It is. I should hope so. With a Wedgwood biscuit. With Careful, wedge. you'll crack your teeth. It's I made know. out of pottery. Nice. And I've got a hot chocolate. 
uh, the second hot chocolate, um, the chap who brought it to me spilled the first one. He said, oh, I'll go change it for you. I thought, well, let me have a drink out of it first, and then you can go bring me another one. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work. Jack's got a rise on this little number. Um, so look at the prices. For the dinner plate in this, one dinner plate, £1,500. Gosh. That's about $1,750. How much is a teapot? Teapot? Have a guess. Two and a half thousand pounds. Four thousand five hundred pounds, or about five thousand dollars. Gosh. What's the set called? Uh, it's called the expensive set. <laughs> so this is the world of Josiah Wedgwood, who entered into his family business when he was young. Well, that's why the area in uh, in the Midlands, Stoke, is known as the Potteries. Come on, let's go and have a look. <laughs> Um, a picture of the Trent and Mersey Canal taking goods from the River Trent at the top right through to the River Mersey at the uh, left hand side of the picture connecting the Trent and Mersey Canal I think um, it was a crucial part and a crucial part in the transfer of this delicate um, delicate goods like pottery and in fact um, Wedgwood was very friendly with James Brindley who obviously built the canals or was, was one of the canal builders constructors originally and they were big friends so uh, yeah I think it was difficult to transport the um, potteries by road because the roads were very uh, bumpy in those days uh, and uneven and therefore the canal boats uh, being pulled by the horses were a more stable way and less damage was caused to the pottery hence the movement from goods from coming in from the Trent and therefore the sea um, through to the sea again on the other side uh, and places in between yeah, the Trent and Mersey Canal, which is what we're on at the moment. 1863, nearly as old as you are. <laughs> How pretty rude. Harsh but true. Back to the canals. So when we go through um, Stoke tomorrow, we'll actually go through and past the site of the original factories. And you'll be able to see all the kilns where they uh, used to fire all the potteries. We're off. It's a windy one this morning. See you, Captain. <laughs> Little duckies trying to get a... Oh, look. The... Oh, my gosh. The cow's frightening them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, she managed to get a little duckies in the water before the cow got to them. So we're just leaving Wedgwood this morning and we're well and truly in the Potteries country. This area of the country, Stoke, Staffordshire, is well known for uh, being the birthplace of the Potteries in the UK. It's been a nice mooring, full of wildlife, but we're now going to get through Stoke today and moor just this side of the uh, Harcastle Tunnel and then we're going to go through the tunnel maybe tomorrow or the day after. Michael's got a challenge on. This is going to be interesting. I'll explain shortly exactly what that challenge is. Keep watching. So the first thing is we've got to get him through this lock. That's, that's easy. He can do that. No problem whatsoever. So he's just gone to get the boat. I'm doing the lock. Then the challenge starts. So this challenge that Michael's about to undertake involves something he's never done before, never done it. So it will be interesting to see whether he manages to cope with it. I think he will. The only difference is he's just going to be a, a, um, not as much um, technical functions available to him to perform the task. And it could involve that boat behind me there. It does involve that boat behind me. So. Any guesses? Any guesses to what it is? Keep watching. I'm just going to ask him to see whether he's up for the challenge. You're taking your coat off. It must be serious. Is this ready for the challenge? Uh, I'm not sure about that. How I'll do you feel? It. How do you feel about it? Oh, all right. Yeah. You sure? It should be fun. I'm just saying this. Just, I said it involves that boat there, and I said that it's um, you've not got as much technical wizardry at your fingertips on this one, have you? No. But I think you might be up for this. We'll see. Yeah, without giving too much away. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, okay. 
lot of expectation. Get ready, get yourself prepared. Right, so we've just found somewhere safe to moor board a reaver. I'm just going to hold on to her here while uh, Michael performs this challenge. Michael's now started his challenge. Basically, this is a higher boat. Yeah, so the people need to win the boat and it's a 70 foot uh, narrow boat. They've never winded before. They weren't confident to do it. So Michael said he'd help. So Michael is now winding a 70 foot narrow boat without a bow thruster. Just on this corner? Yeah, it's literally um, just past, yeah. 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 So, he's just about to start winding. Basically, he's just going backwards and forwards to try to bring the boat round. And every boat, I think, does different things when you're going backwards. Some turn one way, some turn the other way. He's got it, they're going round now. Where we were moored earlier, there was actually a winding hole, um, but I think everybody they asked was saying to them that it wasn't, and you'd have never got this boat round there. It's just too long. He's doing a great job. One thing we can't see from this position, if there's a queue of boats on the other side of him. It's just getting wedged. Yeah. They wouldn't have got round in that other winding hole, would they? Okay. I think he might need to lie down in a darkened room after he's done this. That is one long boat. Captain deserves not one, but two chocolate biscuits for this. Great job. Woohoo, look at that. We're pointing in the other direction. And it's really windy as well, even though we think we're sheltered in the trees. It's been quite windy. Oh, good job, Captain. I get a feeling that there's gonna be an exchange of Captain now. We're going to hand the boat over to the uh, to the other people. What was that like? Like trying to turn a tank round. Yeah, tough. Um, yeah, no manoeuvrability with it uh, whatsoever. No, I, I realised that. Uh, but yeah. did it in the end. Good. Kept grounding and stuff, but never yeah, managed it. Excellent. Well done. Good. So we're back on board Arriva after Michael's uh, Michael's challenge. He got a round of applause. Uh, we've got some new subscribers, <laughs> which is always a bonus. It was uh, lo lovely people, really, really lovely. Thank you. I think one of you, one of them's called Robin. So thank you very much, and we hope that we uh, the rest yeah, of the trip goes yeah, all hope right. the rest of your but trip yeah, goes well. Tricky manoeuvre on a um, seventy-foot higher boat yeah. in a small wind yeah, very, with a bit of wind. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. Challenge complete. Here they are, pointing in the right direction. I don't know your name. Caroline. Caroline and, Ro and Robin. I'm Robin. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, bye. Enjoy. Bye. Oh, thank you. Great trip. See you. Bye. bye. So we're just coming into Stoke on Trent now. Just gone past um, the um, football stadium, and we're just coming up here towards the Trent Aqueduct. Look at that for a boat. That's an eco boat. I'm liking the uh, after deck extension. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Hello. There is our first look at one of the uh, famous Stoke kilns. Pottery kilns. walking and walking to the next lock there's not much distance between these five stoke locks uh, and we've just uh, another boat's just gone into the lock we've come out of so i'm hoping fingers crossed this next lock should be all set for us there's no lock keepers anywhere but that's all right and then we're going to stop at the service point uh, which is just at the entrance to the calden canal busy towpath always when you're going through a city or a town center 
amazing how much the canal towpaths are used by everybody. And then I think it'll be a lunch stop. It's been a busy morning, what with all the uh, captain's challenges. So I've just come alongside, busy little location this, train line there. Michael's just opened the lock gates and I've got to go through that dark tunnel. going to have lunch but there's a boat coming so we are uh, having lunch on the go Michael's taking his sandwich with him and I've got mine here Very casual approach. This is one of those days where you've just got to have lunch on the go, get through the locks. So this is the Turia Bone and Flint Mill erected in 1857. What a very impressive building that. And it's actually where the industrial museum is now. Oh, and it was opened by Fred Dinner in April, the 8th of April, is that 1901? I can't read that from here, it can't be 1901. Oh, 1991. Ah, so it was officially opened, the museum, by Fred Dibner in April 1991. What an impressive structure. Over 150, 170 years old. So Michael's gone ahead to the next lock to uh, get it ready for me. You can just see it empty in there now. And that's the last of the uh, locks in the centre of Stoke. Great change of duties for the last lock. Michael's already got it ready for me, so I've got an easy job. He's going to take the boat in. So this was the warehouse that was used for storing goods originally by the uh, company that owned the Trent and Mersey Canal and then later by British Waterways. And when the boats came through here they were um, gauged to assess the load and a toll was charged accordingly. So yeah years ago this would have been tolled and the um, boat owners would have been had to pay to take their boats on the canal. I suppose that's how they paid for it, wasn't it? So this whole section after we've left the Bone and Flint Museum um, has been very modern. Lots of huge um, modern warehouses. And the canal's been really wide. You can see how wide it is behind me. So very, very modern. And I know we're coming up to Middleport, which is the traditional part of Stoke where all the um, brick kilns are. So a complete contrast. I'm just uh, having a stroll and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna check out moorings. We're gonna moor at Westport Lake today. That's one of the old brick kilns, sadly. It's in a state of disrepair, would have been spectacular in its day. This is a great example of when to use the walkie-talkies because I'm, I'm walking on ahead and there's a really narrow bit there.
just see it. Yeah, so that's a really, really good example. I'm just going to tell Michael. It's still clear, really narrow bridge to go through once you've come past those two moored boats. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a really, really good example of the walkie-talkies and when they come in useful. It'd be absolutely fine, but sometimes it's just better to be warned. Yeah, I was just looking at my watch and it's half three and I think we're a little bit later than we wanted to, um, to be to get to Westport Lake um, because it's the moorings, not right before the tunnel, but about a mile before the tunnel. Sometimes they get really busy, but as you saw, events happen uh, as you're traveling along like helping that um, hire boater with uh, the wind of the 70 foot boat to try to bring the boat round it must be so difficult without a bow thruster but we wanted to get through Stoke and uh, we wanted to get to Westport Lake so uh, yeah it's quite a nice mooring there the other thing is we've not been here for oh two years we moored here when we came through the Hardcastle tunnel the other way but it's great when you come back somewhere because you can explore other areas that you didn't explore I've just seen the moorings I've just clocked them and it looks like we're going to be okay it's it's not shady as I, I remembered well obviously I remembered wrong I thought it was quite shaded lots of trees and there isn't which means we can find a really really good place for the solar panels which will be fab and here look this is perfect and that that's Westport Lake that's going to be our view how gorgeous is that I'm going to go for a run later around it this is our lovely mooring at Westport Lake you can see how windy it is still <gasps> well, we thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed the video the and please don't forget to subscribe it really helps us Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times